comforted and, and enlightened by your word. Uh, just ask you now to be in charge to deliver the message. Uh, thank you now in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. My primary desire for you and that I'm responsible for, I'm not responsible for coffee. I'm responsible for teaching you the Word. And I'm convinced that if the Holy Spirit does not incorporate the Word into your mind, nothing I can say can work. Don't ever come to the opinion that you can make decisions without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the guiding principle in our lives that help us live the Christian life. Next Sunday, my wife has encouraged me to preach on Romans chapter 7, 9 through, tw 9 through 21. The practical, essential qualities for living the Christian life. And my wife said, Charity said, for the first time in my life, when you went through Romans 12, 9 through 21, that for the first time I saw how practical Christian living is. Learning the practical aspect of daily Christian living. Now, it took me a year, and Terry wants me to do it in 45 minutes. Now, how is that possible? I'm going to be running fast when that happens. But I think it's important for us to grasp what God wants us to do. Also, in I put on Facebook today about a profession of faith, and one of my evangelistic friends says, yeah, but thousands have been saved through a profession of faith. And the terminology gets us in trouble. When we use terms to describe, we have always heard a profession <coughs> that we need to make a profession of faith. We also have heard that we're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. And we also have heard that the precious, the precious blood of Christ. Now these are terms, these are terms that we often hear and we hear that evangelists will say, you need to make a profession of faith. You made it, young lady. Come right on in. We, uh, we hear the terms, we hear, we hear the terms, profession of faith. And we hear the terms that we are saved, we're saved, by the blood of Jesus Christ, and we say that the blood of, of Christ is precious. And probably every one of us in this class has one time or another, you will say, well, I have made a profession of faith. I'm sure that that's how we were drawn into this concept of being born again. To be born again, to be born again is actually to be saved, and we call this salvation. But salvation is a general term is a general term. When someone says you're born again, we, when someone says you have, that salvation 
is the general term that tells us about our profession of faith, the blood of Jesus Christ. So salvation includes terms like justification. <coughs> It, it, it incurs redemption. Redemption. It, it talks about the word of uh, conversion. It, it turns, it talks about election. And there are many other terms that we could use. But all of these terms are included in a broad sense, salvation. Salvation talks about justification, redemption, conversion, election, uh, those kind of things that we use. Born again. So my con so what I'm saying is when a person says, well, I've made a profession of faith, you want to ask the person is, what do you mean by profession of faith? And some people would say is, well, I made my profession of salvation by going to the altar. You've heard preachers say, if you've been saved, you need to make that profession and go forward to an altar and confess before everybody that you're saved. I mean, I've said that a myriad of times. So therefore, a person who said so, so then a person goes forward, goes forward, and he makes a profession of faith. Faith is also included in this term salvation. So you have to ask yourself the question, what brings about justification? What brings about redemption? What brings about conversion? What brings about election? What brings about being born again? And what brings about faith? Now, it is true that if you're seven years old like I was, when I believe that the Lord saved me. I had no clue what justification was. I never heard redemption. I never heard conversion. I never heard election. And I never I heard a little bit about faith. I read on Facebook today that there are some and you'll hear it many. Well we had vacation Bible school and twelve professions of faith. Now my comment is, what do they mean by profession of faith? And the preacher will say, a person who makes a profession of faith has been saved. And that person is going to assume that he's made a profession of faith that he believes in what? What does he believe in? <coughs> what does he believe in? He doesn't know what he believes in. And, and the fact of it is he only believes what he has been taught to believe. What the preacher has taught him what he believes and how he believes it. And so he makes a profession of faith on, uh, on May 3rd 1996 he made a profession of faith and on May the 4th 1996 6, there is no change and there's no conversion there's been no conversion there's been no change so he goes forward on a Sunday morning to the altar. He makes a profession of faith because the preacher scared the hell out of him. And he goes forward. He makes a profession of faith that he wants to be saved, but he has no clue what that means. And on May the 4th, there is no 
There's no what? There's no salvation. There's no conversion. There's no change. There's no difference here. There's no difference from here to here. And so now we come to 2015 and there's still no conversion and there's still no change. Now the question is, and I'm not asking you to answer this, is has he been born again? Maybe we should say a profession of faith is has he does it equal does it equal being born again? Once again, the person says, what does it mean to be born again? Well, it means to be saved. So what does it mean to be saved? If I had been saved, the question is, if I have been saved, what, did, what have I been saved from? Saved from. What? What have I been saved from? What? I don't need to answer that, but I've been saved from what? And if I were to ask most of you in this class, what were you saved from? And most of you, including my wife, would say, well, I was saved from going to hell. Right? Most of you say, well, I was saved from going to hell. I was saved in order to go to heaven. Right? Of course. And that's true. But rarely would I hear someone say that I was saved from the wrath of God. I was saved from the wrath of God. Meaning that had I not been saved, the wrath of God would be on me and, and I would be alienated from God. Rarely do you hear anybody say, being saved gives me a relationship. with Jesus Christ. Being saved breaks breaks the bondage of sinful Behavior. Gives me a relationship with Jesus Christ that I didn't have. It breaks the bondage of sinful behavior. And maybe number six, uh, it gives me love for godliness. I make a profession of faith. It gives me faith. It, it gives me the ability to love and to do Romans <coughs> 12, 9 through 21. A person who understands he's not going to hell, that he's going to heaven, that he's been freed from the wrath of God, that gives him a relationship with Jesus Christ, it breaks the bondage of sinful behavior, it gives love for godliness, and it gives me the ability to love and to do Romans 12, 9 through 4, has been born again.